And as we set sail, we see the standard routing choices for both our players, with Ben opening off with Link's house and Gem starting off in Sanctuary. Early map check coming up here for Ben as per usual, and we do see a red crystal down in Desert Palace, and a regular pennant up in Tower of Hera. Do get the confirmation here on Gem's side. And with this layout, I will already say that the Gem has lost matches in the past to Pendant Tower of Hera, as he does have a tendency to not make any deep visits into those dungeons. And a tree pull for magic isn't all that useful for our players, and Gem is going to be equally disappointed here. And Uncle does have a lot of rupees, and the reason for going for the starting routes here is to optimize the number of locations to check prior to Kakarika without having to go too far off. And that's an interesting early medallion with lots of magic, but not really a potent enough weapon to continue to go through the escape portion right now. So Ben heading over to Sanctuary, and we'll go to Kakariko from here on out. Meanwhile, Jem is hoping to find something here in the forest. If not, he's gonna be saving and quitting and go to Link's house and take that path over to Kakariko. Jem is just gonna drop down and pick up some interesting looking uh, flippers. And that early 300 rupees suddenly comes in very useful for a potential early Sora visit. Now, Jem is a player who follows this so-called sphere logic. In essence, when he gets an item, he will heavily pursue the locations unlocked by that item. In this situation, it's pretty probable that Sora is quite high on his priority list right now. But before that, he does prefer to head to that Kakariko destination first. But without the rupees that he will soon get from Uncle, he does need to check a few more places. Ben is going to Kakariko in about five seconds. And being able to get these early medallions is always a great thing, since it means that you don't have to run around and chase them down later on in the run. Ben, of course, has no bombs, so he's first going to spend some money on a cape that already makes people start to think about that Aga one. But for now, there are more important businesses, like actually getting bombs. Yem's route will enable him to get bombs along the way, presuming that these 50-50 bushes here decide to act the way they want. And sadly, they don't. When you're taking this path with this number of rupees, you only need one bomb. Because then you can just go into the shop like Ben is doing right now and just buy the rest that you need. And their bomb RNG is just simply not working for Gem in this game. There, he finally gets those bombs and can head on over to Kakariko. As Ben is uh, gonna find this... Uh, Nice little hook shot there in the Cocoa Hut. So hookshot flippers. Some interesting selection of items for this uh, early game portion as Ben's gonna drop down into the well. At this point it's just going through all of these early game locations, getting as many items as you can and then see where do you go next and at this point most certainly going down to the south shore area heading east and even though Agena has been required in both game one and game two in this final i would be surprised if both our players are gonna make a visit there second medallion already Time to make a little trip down to a blind basement. Also, really early silver arrow, so no need to worry about that silverless Ganon. And the bottle in Kakariko is always very convenient. Just immediately go and check sick it and get out, out of the way. Okay, we're just getting all the invulnerability items. All these magic items, 
that aren't all that useful in the early stages of the game. But the Cane of Burna is actually uh, the first r real weapon, as to speak, apart from these medallions that do cost a lot more magic and because of that are a bit trickier to utilize since they're so slow. And sick kid. I mean, these weapons are really awkward. Now we have two different stun weapons? Hmm. Well, presumably a destination that isn't Kakariko will be able to provide them with something more. But at this point, the flippers is the only true progression that they have. The hookshot will allow them to skip a room over in Eastern Palace. But that's about it at this point. And I am now joined by Sabotander. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Marjavik. How are you? How, tell me about what's going on so far. Well, we're in Kakariko right now, just finding a bunch of semi-useful magic items, hookshot flippers and silver arrows. Awesome, awesome. Sounds great. I'm so excited to be on the call with you here, so uh, let's get right to the action. I say you're joining at a fantastic moment because Ben is done with Kakariko and it's time for him to head to its next destination. And of course those flippers are pointing you quite heavily towards the southern area and as stated earlier, Agena's cave required in both game 1 and game 2 in this best of 3 but I still don't think they're gonna go and check it. So have either of the runners done like escape or anything like that, or east, uh, 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 palace, uh, sorry, uh, eastern palace or anything like that? No, they've just done uncle for 300 rupees. Okay, cool, cool. So uncle forest and Kakariko is all that's been checked, and in addition to this sword here for Ben in the dam. And yeah, no Agena today for Ben. So at this point, seems like we're gonna attempt to get up to that 500 rupee count for a little trip over to Sora's Domain. And then has to be very careful, these moldums do a lot of damage in the early stages of the game, and there were no hard containers over in uh, Kakariko, but Gem is actually shaking a genus cave. You know, why not? Go for a kind of a, a riskier bit of a play here, but uh, uh, you know, it could pay off. Definitely, and again, he can uh, try some different things having three match points, then finding the gloves. And if it's anything we've seen with gloves and open mode, is that the second you get them, you're checking back of escape. Yeah, most definitely. And that's a good point you bring up, Gem having the uh, two game advantage at this point, maybe you know, feeling a little bit more comfortable taking uh, a risk like heading out to uh, Agin early. Just a piece of heart today, though. Yes, uh, the time investment not really paying off, but you know, at this point we're gonna talk potential Dark Wall access. Looks quite likely that this may be an Aga 1, and I wouldn't be surprised if Ben's gonna make a trip down to a Genus Cape before making an Aga call. Mm, that's a good point. I mean, with that uh, cape we've already picked up, um, we're just looking for like a lamp, I guess, um, to maybe kind of be the final piece of the puzzle there. Yeah, indeed, it's just that lamp, and well, would prefer to have the moon pearl as well. Then yeah. now going going back to the sanctuary here to uh, make the dip back into or yeah back into if we're gonna talk about the normal standard mode as we saw during the entire spring tournament. But of course the back of escape because here it is this separate item location. We're actually holy hunt. Yeah, thinking that uh, maybe I need a little bit more cash to uh, check out what Zora might have. Good good thinking. Yeah, this is a really interesting decision because uh, later holy hands aren't all that common. Mostly, you, if you holy hand, it's the first move you do. But here, mm -hmm. you just walk over here to the right and just jump into the the lake here and do all the swimming stuff. Yeah, that's pretty uh, solid routing by uh, by Ben there. Uh, to kind of loop in all these uh, swimming locations in after just hula heading, so he'll have enough cash for the Zora play. Good thinking on his part there. 
It's a very nice uh, adaption, and the gloves, interestingly enough, allowing him to do that cool hand that he otherwise wouldn't have been able to do. Yeah, and with the uh, gloves in hand, it uh, makes him think that uh, Zora is now in logic. Uh, so, you know, why not uh, gather some rupees and uh, give him a pay him a visit? And essentially, it is the, the Zora region. You have Sahaswala Eastern, but Eastern is a crystal. You don't really want to go there. You have escape, a long walk, then potential lag of one you may want to do escape as your final check. Could sequence break up to Death Mountain with the hook shot to check a lot of stuff, but that is a sequence break. Yeah, and any sequence breaking you do, uh, you've got to keep an eye on uh, kind of th or keep thinking about the logic uh, when you're when you're in a sequence break. Like what uh, what items you're finding, you know, you're, you're not supposed to have them yet. Well, that's that moon pearl that is ever so needed in any seed. Really nice. Okay, so it's getting a little bit closer towards um, maybe not being an Agaseed. Um, we're just looking for the hammer or one more glove upgrade. Yeah, this is looking pretty tight there. It's an air capacity upgrade and there weren't enough rupees here in the waterfall, so Jem's not going to be able to check Sora here with this routing set. This is a significant item that's going to push Ben ahead. You know, I think that's a significant item. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> the thing, though, is that mirror in logic doesn't do anything, mm -hmm. but via sequence break, you do have Tower of Hera access. It almost has the feel of a seed where if you did choose to sequence break, uh, you might be able to uh, skip out on having to do um, uh, Aghanim. That is a really good point. Ooh, did, uh, I guess Jem doesn't have the cash for the Zora play yet, so uh, decided to nope yes. out of the domain. And that could end up being significant. And we have another myth to Dark World See, This is the third in a row in this tournament, or this final, I should say. So the advantage Ben has here is having that mirror, he's um, going to be able to move between the dark and light worlds a little easier than Jem, who's going to pick up the glove here and is also going to have dark world access, but won't be able to kind of flip back and forth between the worlds. And just as in the past two seeds, myths for dark world, what does Ben do? He sequence breaks Death Mountain, and I think Jem is going to make the exact same call. And what this essentially boils down to is these players want to start Dark World with Hype K, but you can't do that if you don't find a hammer. So this is a, a play to attempt to get the hammer prior to heading into the Dark World. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if your only access point into the Dark World is the uh, Village of Outcasts there, um, it does make routing through the Dark World pretty time-consuming. And very limited, especially if there is something over there on those eastern portions. But at this point, the big thing we're waiting for is a Dark World map check to see is Swamp Palace pendant or a crystal. Yeah, we should get that Dark World check uh, once uh, Ben heads over to the east side here and uh, heads into the Dark World for the first time. And he will be able to route this much more effectively since he does have that mirror. So it seems like he might be choosing not to uh, at this point. Maybe he's working a different kind of uh, routing through the eastern death mountain here. Potentially, potentially. Well, you know what they say about early ice swabs. <laughs> So are we looking at a pendant turtle rock, but y that you have to dive into anyways? Yeah. And this is definitely a rupee heavy sea, just 
very unfortunate for where the rupees are located for Jen. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of locations here that is a part of a sequence break. And if game two showed us anything, Jem is really good at keeping track of what is and isn't in logic with the way that he routed the, the late game in game two. Then did some different kind of choices that made it uh, indicate that he wasn't quite on the same page. Ben here gets to do Spiral Cave and then lightly heads straight into the Dark Hole after this. It's such a long run through the Spiral Cave here when you don't have the boots. It feels like it just takes forever. Absolutely. And just look at this seed. Four hearts, green mail. It's not being very kind to them despite having both invulnerability items. I guess this is the big moment of truth for that mirror at Sora. And that is a crystalline swamp, and it's another pendant in Thieves Town, and Yem is not going to be happy about that. <laughs> we also had um, Pendant Turtle Rock, that was our green pendant for this seed. Well, I guess the, the Ice Rod logic, question mark, question mark, is in effect. You betcha. So at this point, then can make a pretty interesting call into an early swamp play if he decides to do that. Yes, for one chest, of course, because he doesn't have a hammer. I was gonna say, yeah, that'd be a really, really interesting play uh, for that one chest. But uh, it, it, it's it's happened before where the, uh, there's something pretty important on that in that one chest. So uh, could see it's something like that. Yeah, Yen won a match in the Spring Tournament where the hammer was in that first chest. Anything is possible in Randomizer, but he can't make that call since he doesn't have that mirror. And I imagine it's gonna take a long time before he checks out Sora. Well, we are getting all the rupees today in the second bottle. Bottle. Now, with this routing, then can just head on over here to the west side, use the mirror, and go into Tower of Hera. Meanwhile, Jem cannot make this call without the mirror. Yeah, it wouldn't be too much of a time loss, I guess, though, to just uh, save quit and uh, run back up the mountain in the light world to do the same, make the same play. Yeah, I imagine as much. And the thing is still with how much Yen tends to avoid and the dungeons, I don't really think he cares all that much about not being able to go Tower of Hera right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we might see a bit of divergence, might see Gem maybe go for mm. Village of Outcasts and whatnot. Well, it's basement locked and it's a pendant tower of Hera. I don't think Ben's gonna come back there for a long time. Especially with there only being one item left there. Yeah, he did manage to score that blue mail though, so that's a, that's a nice uh, little safety, especially seeing as we uh, both our runners have very little uh, uh, hearts right now. Indeed, and now we will see their trips over into the Dark World, forced to make the mid's entrance over at the village of Outcast, uh, Skullwoods area. And we're back here again with this pendant thieves down that just keeps on haunting Yem in this tournament, and with one exception, he has just checked the first four chests and then left. In one seed, which was game one in this final, he just full clear Thieves Town, 
and of course it wasn't required. It's funny because, uh, yeah, Pendant Thieves Town is a really hard call to make in your early game. You know, when you've got a, generally a lot of the world open to you, uh, to dive all the way into uh, the Pendant Thieves Town, it's a tough call to make. Indeed, and we're seeing both players start off here with Skull Woods. An interesting decision since it is a Crystal Onion and they cannot beat it since they don't have the Fire Rod. There may be a little bit of incentive to take this direction since they have the cape and can route this into Bumper Cape and can even continue and route into Graveyard Ledge following that. Yeah, I definitely agree. I see a lot of runners who will check these then make Bumper Cave part of their the little route around uh, before they head towards Village of Outcasts. So likely what we'll see from both of our runners here. This is just a very thorough way to route this uh, early stage of the Dark Well then. Yen with just the green mail, most of these enemies do two full hearts of damage. Just be very careful. An interesting thing here about these skimmers is that you can stun them with the boomerang, but not with the hookshot. And you're also getting to see here how useful this mirror is in the routing these locations in. The Ben does have a fairy that was picked up in one of the two bottles over in Hookshot Case, so he is fine. A little unfortunate to have to uh, waste a fairy this early on in a run, but uh, not too much of a penalty there. Indeed, a nice safety item being picked up there in the early game. So ben takes the fall while Jem just does the bomb jump to get to the chest. Alright, so they both pulled even five hearts apiece there. I mean, this looks extremely close, but then you take a look at the items and you see Ben having the mirror. It's a really significant find for him, um, for sure. Yeah, especially at such a location. And that's our final medallion, and Jem is gonna pick it up. Ben is gonna leave that for now, thinking that Meyer may not need either. That's uh, that's interesting. We saw that uh, Turtle Rock was Quake to get in, so we don't know what Misery Mire is yet. But uh, you know, I guess you're thinking two out of three. Uh, your odds are in your favor that you're you'll be okay, and you'll save your time uh, by not uh, running after that uh, Ether Medallion. Yeah, absolutely. And if this is a medallion that he will need, he can just. Save and quit, and at that point you will have the flute flute to Kakariko go into Dark World. Not the biggest time loss. It could just be a way of Ben trying to cut corners to gain an edge since he is down two games in this best of five. So we find that there was a uh, heart container in the graveyard ledge here, which is one of the locations that Ben has access to with that mirror that uh, Jem doesn't. So that could have been like a real game-changing uh, kind of uh, location there. But uh, heart container, you're not going to turn that down when you're uh, only working with five hearts or six hearts. Indeed, the fewer hearts you have, the more they matter. And we will soon be seeing how deep they will go into Thieves Town, but since this is a Smith's entrance, we may get to see some uh, Smith, some World Tour, more so for Ben with having the mirror makes that so much faster. Mm -hmm. Here is Ben's dip. Yeah, what it'll come down to in Thieves Town here is how many items we get in the first four chests. If we um, luck out and get two or three items, then uh, you'll be thinking that you don't have to go all the way to the back. But uh, if we get only dungeon items, that's when runners kind of tend to keep going into the dungeon further. 
So Ben finds a book down there in the Bombable Hut, like the Yem's next destination following Thieves Town. Which does give desert access, but cannot beat the dungeon without a fire source, and it could also be boots locked. I'm gonna presume you kept track of the number of items in Thieves Town? Uh, yeah, we've got one big 20 so far and a single rupee here, so that's two of the dungeon items found so far. And Yem releases the fairy, he is gonna take a death warp. Alrighty, so he's done in here, he wants to get out, he's not gonna go deeper in the dungeon at this point. Indeed, and we'll see how deep Ben decides to go. And yeah, I'm likely gonna follow this up with uh, a tour down here to the southern parts of the Dark World. As stated, no mirror, no K45 check. It'll be much slower to bring the the smith and the chest along for this as well. Mm -hmm. And I can't really see a play into Palace of Darkness at this point without the hammer and bow. Yeah. Ben is also leaving after four chests, but he does have a pretty decent, I guess. Like, if you want to make the call into Swamp, because, yeah, there's only one chest, but you've got everything for that one chest, and pretty early on as well. Yeah, if we get all the way down to Swamp Palace and our runners haven't found anything else, um, then taking a dip in to check out that one chest, you know, why not? Um, it could be the key to the to everything in this uh, in this seed. The thing is also that if, say, the hammer is in a location like that, that is, in a way, good for Jen because he's going to be more limited on the options that he has, which will force him back to Sora. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Jen is going to do a frog tour, and I think Ben is going to do a chest tour then. The advantage of having that mirror. Ooh, the swag net, very nice, from our good friend Stumpy there. I presume that item will not be used. Most likely not. As it should be. And then we'll also have the opportunity to check Bumble's tablet. Just see what's there, doesn't have the Master Sword. Information is always good. It's time for the, the cave of uh, major usual stuff. Uh, I guess the lamp is pretty good in addition to the four twenties. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, that's uh, it's not bad. So everything up on Death Mountain is now in logic thanks to that lamp. Mm -hmm. And they got nothing up there. Yeah, I don't think we really got anything of value up in uh, up in Death Mountain. Yeah, but what about that mirror unlocking the fire rod for Ben? Oh, that's a pretty big find. So this mirror is a really crucial item, of course required for Swamp, but also for major items that are required to beat other dungeons. So Ben can, at this point, clear Skull Woods with that. Did you count the number of items that were found? In uh, Skull Woods? Yes. Mm, I, I did not, unfortunately. I think maybe we found one? One seems to be standard, at least. There's two locations in the back that are fire rod blocked. We'll see Ben here get the, the other fire source, and then they have all the fire they need. You could make it dip into ice, but again, no hammer, so you can't beat the dungeon, and it's ice. 
Alrighty, so Jim going for an interesting play here. Going to be checking the first uh, chest here in uh, Palace of Darkness. But he has a companion. Yeah, how's this going to work? Is it just going to toss the um, the frog out and then Kiki just takes over? Is he just dumping the frog? I don't know how this works. Wow. <laughs> it evolved into a monkey. How does that work? I, I didn't know that was a thing. I guess evolution works in weird ways in the dark world. <laughs> well, Yen may just be locked out here from the first uh, chest. As Ben checks the Bumbles tablet and uh, move along, and yeah, he's locked out. The boat is needed to get anything done in Palace of Darkness. So, I mean, the fact that Jem is getting locked out in a lot of different places is... Um going to be good for him. Eventually he's going to not have too many options and he's going to have to go back to Zora. Indeed, but first off he is going to do the escape check. Uh, ben has not been here, so it could still be something important. But on the other hand, if it's something important, it means it's going to take longer for him to get the mirror. It's just a... Uh... An extremely unfortunate situation here for Jem that he didn't have the money for Sora and Sora ended up having something. Mm -hmm. And for this particular seed, um, we only oh. need the fire rod for uh, Skull Woods. Ooh, that hammer. Oh boy. Yeah, that hammer. Then you can make the call into Swamp, I believe. Yes. <laughs> But if you think about that hammer from Yem's position, how much does it do? Tower of Hera? Peg Cave? Mm, yeah, it won't open up a whole heck of a lot for him. Well, needless to say though, the hammer is always required. So far, Jem's not finding anything down here in Escape. Soon enough, we will see if Desert is boots locked or not. Oh. So, there's a crystal layer for Ben in addition to the hammer. And Jem finds a map. Not very happy with that map. Because he doesn't have the mirror, looks like he's taking another death warp here. Yeah, back to the entrance and uh, checking the chest in the back then. And Lanmolas has the second item in Desert Palace. Well, at this point, things are working out very well for Ben being able to clear off these Crystal Dungeons starting here with Desert. Yeah, the world is definitely uh, pretty open for Ben at this point. He's got a lot of things that he can take care of. Um, I mean, we're still looking for a couple of items, so if those um, continue to elude him, then it gives Jem more chances to kind of catch up if Jem is willing to make some kind of more risky kind of plays. Yeah, I don't know about you, but Yem and Risky doesn't exactly go well together, I'd say. No, yeah, that's one of the things that Jem is so good at. It just, um, it's, he's really, you know, straight followed, for, follows the logic and um, is really thorough as he plays. So um, execution is great. So that's, that's what his game style is. It's not going to play well to... Uh, to try and make up time against Ben here. No, in his mind, he's been to the Sora area once. I'm gonna check all the other spots likely before making the dip back there. Uh, unfortunately for him, 
it needs to make that trip, but it could still find some other stuff along the way. Like that bow. And yeah, maybe that's mushroom. A thing. So, I mean, you find the bow here of Sahasvala, so sure, you go into Eastern. Like, that's the most straightforward play you can make. Mm hmm. But do you think, as we see Lanmola getting slaughtered on Ben's side, that Yem is gonna go back into Palace of Darkness? That is a long way for him to run to get back there, um, having to go from the portal all the way over in Village of Outcasts. Um, but it, it will open up a lot of items for him. There's a sword on Lanmolas there, so Ben's got the Master Sword now, which is great. Um, but Jem might not have too many more options. He might consider doing a dive of Palace of Darkness. Yeah, I think, though, he may just make the trip to the desert first, and that get, then gives him the hammer, then you can go back to Palace of Darkness, full clear that dungeon. And uh, the bow at that location is a bit weird, I'd say, because when you get so much in the early game to get you into the Dark World, the Death Mountain, all that stuff, you tend to put off Sahasvara for a long time. And that may just continue here for Ben. Mm -hmm. Yeah, considering Ben has a couple other options, um, he might leave the uh, eastern area uh, alone for a little while longer. That is... Uh, that could definitely be a situation for him. I'm thinking what we're seeing here is Ben's going to probably finish off Skull Woods really quick um, and then make his way maybe down to uh, Swamp Palace. Imagine it's going to mirror and check the pedestal following the Mofula kill. Mm, mm -hmm. Essentially, the best opportunity you have to check the pedestal and get that information, because in his mind, it could be bow, it could be flute on the pedestal. Yeah, we know there. that it can just be the flute. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess boots if we're gonna go through with the torch in Ganna's Tower and yada yada yada. <laughs> the people love it, but the runners don't. Yeah, really. And CM is just proceeding through Eastern Palace. It's, it's Eastern Palace. It's not that difficult. Yeah, and it'll give him something to do while he's kind of thinking about where his next progression item might be hanging out. Um, just clearing a dungeon, getting a crystal on the board is, is an important thing to do while you're kind of just thinking, running through your different options. And uh, he will start to run out of options. So, Jem, just finding uh, Baby's first shield there in uh, the vanilla big key chest there. And as Ben sits on exactly 1,000 rupees, we'll drop down into Mofula. And Mofula is not playing the worst, but could be playing better. That was a really good fight for Ben. Mm -hmm. And also his second crystal with that kill. And Jem soon here on our modes, and Ben is going back in, so presumably there's still one item left here in this dungeon. Uh, yes, yeah, there is. So that might be, that must be that one chest right there. Um, and with that mirror again, he'll be able to uh, quickly uh, get out of the dungeon once he's finished grabbing it. Mirror back out. Mirror check the pedestal. Well, there's another small shield. And there is no reason to make this mirror here unless you're gonna go in and check the ped. the moment everyone's been waiting for. Let's see if uh, anything is hanging out on the pedestal. Nope. Yes, no. 
we're, we're moving on with our lives and Jem is moving southwards and it's either swimming for the mushroom yeah it looks like he is swimming for the mushroom yeah that makes sense it was something you could uh, turn in fairly early on in the seeds so might as well take care of that this might get him back up to zora fingers crossed for his sake ben is buying a potion okay so and bombs is he thinking that he might potion glitch in uh, palace of darkness that he doesn't could have a but if he's going this way, maybe he's going into ice? Ooh. That'd be spicy. It was a piece of art from the mushroom, but yeah, this is an ice palace play from Ben. I mean, why not? You've got everything that you need to finish it off. Might as well take a look. And this is definitely that bow being in a bit of an awkward location. And this is a crystal we can hold here. Yeah. I mean, because Ice Palace is one of those dungeons that a lot of runners like to leave until the very end so they can go mode it, which saves a substantial amount of time. But Ben is thinking that uh, the bow is possibly in some kind of weird location. Let's go into Ice Palace to see if it's there. It looks like Yem is gonna go ahead and do... Sniff, uh, take two. Ooh, wow, now Ben's up to Tempered Sword. Fantastic. Yeah, getting those swords really nice for him. So if Yem goes for the Sally Slow Smith take two into chess, that will put him in a close spot for Desert Palace, but he is going catfish? Yeah, I'm thinking that's what he's doing here. Oh, that's really bold. And it's just all this time being spent kind of uh, running around the overworld here that's uh, slowly adding up, you know? I mean, it, it, he's not out of it yet, Jem, but, uh, uh, you know, every every kind of play that he's making here is, is leading him further and further uh, away from uh, Ben at this point. Yeah, definitely. This is not a common situation that you see Jem in. He might uh, then, from Catfish, head down to Pod at this point. Yeah, that is uh, a possibility. You're gonna make a second trip into there, and you know how early the bow was available, and that Palace Darkness is bow locked. But I'm still a little bit surprised about him not making the trip over to Desert. Mm -hmm. Possibly the earlier genius cave check may prompt him to not go there, but we do see catfish with garbage again. Yeah, that's a really good point, that he has, uh, much like with the Zora situation that he's currently faced with, um, Jem has, like, kind of half-checked certain locations, the desert and uh, the Zora waterfall area. Um, doesn't want to have to go back to those locations, but is missing out on a couple of key items. And this forces him into making some really awkward routing decisions that are not paying off for him. Except for the bow, but the bow may just lead him on a wild goose chase for nothing, especially if it's a trip into Palace of Darkness, because that means he's gonna have to triple the Palace of Darkness when you only really needed to go there once. Mm -hmm. And it looks like that is the destination. Meanwhile, while a sword has been found for Ben in ice, nothing else so far. Now ice only has three items in the first place, it's not the most lucrative of destinations. I guess we could just make a little go through here of the items that we're looking for. If we just combine what our players have, we're just looking for Cane of Samaria and Flute, then potentially the boots for the one in 22. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it for this seed. But because of how spread out the items are, Ben having Mirror, Hammer, and Gem having Bow, they are further apart than it may seem.
We've definitely seen some different choices here from our players. Jen forced into these awkward spots because of Sora, or not having enough money for Sora, and then early Ice Palace call, and wouldn't really say that's how he usually plays. Mm -hmm. It was uh, pointing out in chat here that uh, this is one of our 5-6 crystals, so maybe Ben was thinking about that as well. There's three items in the dungeon, but then afterwards, uh, having completed Desert Palace, uh, he'll have access to the Pyramid Fairy. Um, so that's two more items, loca uh, locations possibly. And then following the Pyramid Fairy Pyramid check, you can go straight to Eastern Palace of Darkness. Yeah, where he'll likely mirror over to Sahasrila, pick up the bow, and then be, you know, making more progress after that. Indeed, that's a really great long-term routing decision from Ben, if that turns out to be the case. And uh, a fantastic holes there fight for Ben. a bit more money, uh, so uh, nothing of value in uh, Ice Palace, really. So, for Jem's sake, that's great. Um, when he does eventually get to the dungeon, he should be able to go mode it. And Jem taking another Death Warp in Palace of Darkness, no mirror, and this time in being boots locked, or bow locked, sorry. You do have to make some different routing choices. And I don't think that Pyramid Fairy call was uh, quite correct, unless it's gonna be Swamp first and then making the call. Mm, let's see. Mm, spicy. Yeah, looks like Swamp to me. Swamp into Pyramid with Fairy into Sahaswala, you get the bow, and then you do Eastern Pod back to back. Mm -hmm. And suddenly you're sitting at six crystals. That sounds yeah, pretty so good depending on the way the items work out here, um, I mean, uh, it'll it, it have to work out really well for Jem. Uh, he might be able to go mode uh, Swamp Palace and Ice Palace, but he might be too far behind at that point. Yeah, that is the problem. So far, this uh, mirror only really locked that fire rod uh, on K45. But at this point, Jen needs to make a call over to both Desert to get the hammer and over to Sora to get the uh, mirror. Mirror, yes, mirror. <laughs> So this first chest here that was available quite early on. Okay, big key in first chest, that's interesting. And Jen is done over in uh, Palace of Darkness. So where is he going now? Looks like Looks desert. Like, yeah, desert. So this will be good. He'll be able to pick up the hammer. Um, It'll make his access into the Dark World easier, but it actually, at this point, is not going to open up too much more location-wise for him, because he's missing that mirror, he's missing the fire rod, um, so he's not going to have a lot of options, even though the hammer is a big find. The best thing for Jem here would be Flute in Tower of Hera. Mm -hmm. And... I'm having a difficult time thinking of a situation for Jem that would be beneficial, and that is the only one I can find. Well, Jem going into desert will know that boots are not required, we'll get his hammer, as then he's going through the swamp. We do know that there's at least one item over on the left side now. Yep. So Ben is going to head into the back first before uh, re-entering the dungeon to do, possibly do the left side. Um, that's a pretty common strategy for a lot of runners. Indeed, if you do make the trip back, since I know some 
people are going to have some flashbacks to get that game two where Fluke was on left side and he didn't go back in for it. We'll have to wait and see about that. Some more rupees and... Well, there are two items on left side. So with two items over there, that should be enough for uh, for Ben to definitely jump back in to the dungeon after uh, defeating Argus. Yeah, I would think as much. But then there is... Well, here's the thing. I do agree with you because of the... Uh, he is still searching for the boat to try and get some, like, god-like routing over to Eastern Pod after Pyramid Ferry, which is just gonna work out magically because the bow is at Sahasvana, but he doesn't know that. And in his mind, he's also still looking for the cane. We're also looking for the cane here from our perspective and the flute. Mm -hmm. Still a fair amount of items left. And no boots here for Ben, so can't do the quick kill. Still taking care of those puffs pretty efficiently, though. Indeed. That last one, though, didn't really want to get hooked. <laughs> Setting up a fire rod, one cycle here, two hits, and a spin. Very nice. Ooh, yeah. wow. <laughs> the cane on Argus. Do you go back in now, after finding that cane? And Rolf. remember, that cane is mirror-locked. You know, that might be enough to pull you away from doing left side, but man, I don't know if I could leave two chests hanging out back there. And neither thing's Ben, he's going back in. So that means Fire Rod and Cane are mirror-locked. I mean, the more items that are behind the mirror, the I guess the better it is for Jem. But uh, yeah, he is definitely losing more and more time uh, every every play that we're making here. Indeed, and from our perspective, we are just looking for that flute, which will guarantee go mode Meyer, which doesn't really matter because it's Meyer. <laughs> you never know what a big key is. I mean, this does open up flute on laser bridge, green pen, and Sahasrala shenanigans. Yada, mm -hmm. yada, yada. Mm -hmm. And I guess there's like four people out there that are excited about that. Sorry, 400. <laughs> and as the M effectively uses the silver arrows on the Molas, he gets his second crystal. Hammer and picking up hearts here. Oh, is he going for Ice Palace as well? I, I think, think he is. He's going, yeah. That's why he went for the hearts. He's gonna buy a potion first. is very unfortunate. You cannot beat Ice Palace without the hammer. Or what am I saying? <laughs> Why am I talking about the hammer? Why is this never confusing? No! No, 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 no. I didn't say anything. Commentators no. are always right, you know? Commentators right. are 100% right, 100% of the time. No objections to anything. It's so, fine. <laughs> it's not fine for Jem, though, because he has to bombos his way through Ice Palace. Yeah. And that's going to take some additional time, sadly. But this is a crystal dungeon that he can full clear and will unlock the pyramid fairy. Mm -hmm. Which is what we talked about to Ben earlier. And there was nothing on left side. Of course, yeah, that's always how it goes. When you think there's something over there, there, there never is. Oh, Yam now up to his tier 3 sword. 
And time for this long-term planning here by Ben. I seem to swarm into Pyramid. Yeah, this is working out pretty well for him. I mean, he could go Catfish after Pyramid. Which would be interesting. First, of course, that Pyramid Fairy will be checked. Mm -hmm. And still, I, I just want to point out, look at their hearts this far into the seed. Yeah, really. What, uh, seven and eight apiece here. Uh, yeah, that's still pretty low. And, and Gem is still on green mail, which is even scarier. Yeah, that blue mail in the Tower of Hera basement doing wonders here for Ben. Perhaps this uh, pyramid fairy... I mean, I don't really think you say no to a hard container. And no, Ben not. can route in escape with this. Oh my goodness, this route is incredible. Yeah, really solid. Some really good long-term thinking here for Ben to be able to get all of this in in one go. Well, 56 minute escape for Ben. We know he's not gonna get anything from this, but he's gonna get the locations out. We're waiting for Gem to head to Cold Stair. Yeah, I guess seeing as we're about an hour in, we can do a little bit of a recap. Uh, the the real key to this uh, race here, for anyone just joining us here, is uh, that uh, the mirror was hanging out on Zora, and uh, Ben, as you can see, has the mirror, and uh, Jem does not. And the mirror was uh, kind of the big stopping point for a lot of this seed. Uh, it had the fire rod behind it, as well as the Cana Samaria. So um, making that play to Zora with enough cash in hand, uh, Ben was able to take a pretty substantial advantage uh, in this race. Uh, it's not over yet, we're still looking for the flute, but uh, at uh, this point, uh, things are in Ben's favor for sure. It's not every day you get to say, Hulihan, may I just won you a match. Yeah. And not even an early Hulihan, like the first decision you make Hulihan, but a later setup Hulihan that was unlocked by gloves since you had flippers. Mm -hmm. And not a lot of people think about doing Hulihan in that situation. And he was even over on Ice Rod Cave and could just fl swim over to Sora, but no, save and quit to Sanctuary, do the Hulihan at the Escape Fall, go, which pops you back out then at Link's house, and then go for the swim after that. Ben definitely came in here with a strategy on how he wanted to play this seed, and it has worked out great for him. Except that he still isn't going to find the bow of Sahasrala, and he is going into Tower of Hera Turtle Rock? Okay, so this is a really weird play. You would think that at, at this point, with, with, with Pod and Eastern both completely unchecked at this point, Yikes, what a what an interesting play to go for Turtle Rock and possibly uh, Tower of Hera, both uh, pendant dungeons. He must think that there is no way the bow was available at the very start of the game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it must be somewhere deep. And, you know, everything for Turtle Rock has been here for quite a while. Yeah, that is true. Well, Ben is uh, going to go into Turtle Rock first. So, I mean, I mean if, if the flute is in here, then this is just fantastic. He's made a, a, you know, a really key play in the, in the race here. Um, but otherwise, he's kind of giving a bit of time back to Jem to try and catch up here. Well... What locations do we have left to check if we combine both our players that aren't Tower of Hera, Turtle Rock? 
Actually, I mean, good point. We don't really have too much else on the table. Um, so it could be no. in one of these two. I mean, it's interesting from Ben's perspective because he hasn't dipped into uh, Eastern Palace and uh, Pod, but for Jem especially, Jem is going to run out of locations a lot, you know, sooner. At least his his route is a little bit more determined at this point. Jem did strike a little bit there with Cold Stare, but brings out the cape for the victory. And in terms of locations, like Spy Cave, but you can route that in after this. Ooh, I'm Spy seeing, um, a, a I'm location seeing a... that. Mm. You, Spy Cave is a location that you want to end your routing with because you don't want to go back out. True, yeah. Um, I'm seeing some in chat saying maybe back of Thieves Town. Uh, that's interesting. Mm. That could be a play. Yeah, there's two items left there. Yen looks to be going for the Pyramid Fairy. He's not going to get anything from that. But yeah, back of Thieves Town, Spy Cave. I mean, if those are the only ones, I can only think of those. If we're gonna talk lucrative spots, then I guess Green Pen and T Turtle Rock is the play. Yeah, and I see a nice, uh, a nice little bit in the chat there um, from Seth Darkheart about uh, routing this into Sahasrila afterwards, seeing as it is the green pendant. So, I mean, you are making a couple extra checks up here in Turtle Rock, but you're thinking, picking up that green pendant, then you run down to Sahasrila, and that's where your bow is going to be hanging out. Possibly also the flute on the green pendant itself. So, um, yeah, I mean, there is, there is, you know, reasons why Ben has decided to make this play for sure. Um, just a little uh, interesting considering it is a bit of a time sink to head all the way up to uh, Dark Death Mountain. You know, I'm a big fan of routing in the Green Pendant check with Sahasrala. It's just, I don't really think of that when the Green Pendant is Turtle Rock. <laughs> yeah, really. I guess that's why Ben's in the finals and we're just on the sidelines here. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. So where's Yem going now? Where is he going? Or is he going to make the triple dip into Palace of Darkness, since he has the hammer now? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, you can finish it off now, so you might as well. When you're thinking you don't have too much else in the way of locations to check. I mean, what does he have left after this? Like, Spy Cave, um, Tower of Hera, Back of Thieves Town... Yeah, we might see Jem make one of those two plays, either to um, Tower of Hera or um, Thieves Town. I think even before we get him to go back to Zora, because Zora is just such a one-off that he's kind of like, he's orphaned it at this point, and he seems content to just leave it. Yeah, and I don't blame him for doing that at all. Sometimes he just decide that if this spot has an item, well, I'm lost, so I just have to play as if that location doesn't have anything. Mm -hmm. and the search in Turtle Rock continues. Yep, the search and turtle walk continues. Do you still think, though, that Ben will go through with the entire dungeon, even if Flute is on the upcoming chest during Laser Bridge? You know, I mean, if if it's on Laser Bridge, then he might just carry on and finish the dungeon out anyways, because he still has no clue where that bow is, and you don't want to leave anything behind, especially like a Trinex fight. You wouldn't want to have to come back for that. Absolutely not. Uh, yeah. Then waiting a cycle there after the unfortunate fall. I like Gem's really a uh, swag uh, boomerang toss there, kind of behind the back. It's just showing off at this point. Yeah, 
ever so hype laser bridge for items. Yeah, I, I, I think that's the lost 20 rupees that was supposed to be in Hype Cave. <laughs> And something else that is a little bit interesting here is that Jim is actually having the sword out here on Helmosaur. He tends to not have that usually, and then finding the other mail upgrade, and Jim still sitting here with eight hearts screen mail. So that's two mail upgrades in uh, Pendant Dungeons, so if Jem skips out on those, then he's going to definitely stay on green mail all the way through. And then dungeons up on Death Mountain. Well, what's your next decision, Gem? It looks like we are going into Tower of Hera, followed by Spike Cave here for Gem. By K first, since he doesn't have the mirror, so he can't take this route. It's a long way to walk to Pen and Tower of Hera. And with a really nice quick kill in the uh, second half of the Trinex fight. And rewarded with hearts that don't really matter all that much to him right now, with sitting at 12 and red mail. Yeah, he's in good shape now. Gem here, just really low. Nine hearts, green mail, more than an hour into this seed. Hmm, the search continues. Yeah, so Jem looks like he's going to head back and up to Tower of Hera, as you had said. Um, and Ben is finally making the play over to the eastern area. He's going to pick up uh, his bow, and we'll find out what Sahashwala is holding on to. Yeah, Ben is first heading into the Dark World to set up the Mirror Portal. So regardless of what, he is planning here to go eastern pod back to back. Of course, he will be able to full clear both of them. And will this turtle rock have been worth it? Yeah, because other than the uh, red mail, there wasn't a whole lot of value in there. Uh, so it's going to have to come down to this pendant here. Because um, we also know that the pedestal is dead. That was checked by Ben earlier. So the green pendant is the only thing that can be holding. Uh, the flute, which is what Ben's looking for. Well, we will know in just a few seconds as Ben goes in. I'm gonna talk to Sasola after equipping some bombs and I'm gonna throw away a bomb and wow. Oh, wow. He is gonna be in go mode. Unreal. Because even if Ether is needed for Meyer, we know where Ether is. It's on Bumper Cave, and Ben knows that Ben's in go mode. And I cannot see Jem making a comeback here. No, unfortunately not. At this point, it's a little too far gone. Welcome to Randomizer, ladies and gentlemen. And Yem doesn't have the cane, he has to beat Swamp Palace to get the cane, to get into Turtle Rock. Oh, you need a Fire Rod for that as well. Oh, you need a Mirror for that too, so you need to check K45 and then beat Swamp after checking Source. You can go to Turtle Rock so you can get the Flute in a location that you've already visited three times, if we're going to count just Palace of Darkness visits. And this breathes life into this series. Yeah, really. I mean, it was looking like uh, Gem might be able to pull off a sweep here and take it uh, three in a row. But uh, yeah, we're gonna we're unless something catastrophic happens, we're gonna see a game four out of this series. It will take a lot of Ganon hugs and 
Moldorm 2 deaths, not false, deaths for Jem to make a <laughs> comeback here. And we know that there is nothing in this Tower of Hera here. Yeah, the only thing that uh, Jem found was that blue mail, but now it's making it harder for him to death warp. Today has not been Jem's day. Well, this is how it works sometimes in Randomizer. One location that you cannot check when you're there and it ends up being something that you so desperately need and unlocking so many useful locations and being required, of course. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's so many fans out there who are really out for Ben. I mean, the boots are pretty nice, but they're, they're not going to help you gain all this time that you've lost yeah. by not checking Sora. And now he's gonna check Bonk Rocks, he's gonna check King's Tome, he's not gonna get anything. I mean, okay, Ganon's Tower big key on Lamp. Could happen, but what's Ben gonna do? He's gonna mirror and check Tower of Hera immediately and then get the boots. Mm -hmm. It's the first location that he's likely gonna check. That and Ether Tablet, because we don't... Uh, I think... I. Yeah, must have checked the Ether Tablet before going to Tower of Hera, I don't remember. He did, so I think even, it was just some junk. Yeah, so even though, even the big key on the torch is not going to save Jem here. And I'm guessing that after checking the Bonk Rocks here, he's probably going to head to, I don't know, like Thieves Town and uh, clear that out. Yeah. I mean, I hate being the bringer of anti-hype, but... The boots here are not a saving grace. Or this is not a portal that's often taken. And the only reason you would take this portal is if you're going to Ice Palace or going to Sora. Okay, so this might be a gem finally. I guess with the boots in hand, your your run through the Zora's domain is a little bit quicker. So uh, finally making the call, but it is going to be a, too little too late here, unfortunately. I guess Jem really, really hates Pendant Thieves Town. But unfortunately, Ben's had this for, what, 40 minutes? 45? Ben bombing an entrance he already bombed. Oh yeah, and there's your mirror. Yeah, and with that, uh, Jem's got to know that he's uh, he's behind in this seed. Indeed, and uh, he has a Swamp Palace to beat, he has a Turtle Rock that he has to full clear. It, the boots are not going to give him all that he needs. You know? Then picking up a win, three slides into the series, but we'll get to see a game four, more rando for the people. Yeah, that's really hype. I mean, and you kind of don't, you don't want a, like a series like this to end when you're seeing two top tier runners just go at it like this. So uh, yeah, another game is definitely welcomed uh, from our perspective. I'm sure these two guys definitely just want to get it over with as soon as possible. Yeah, and Gem was actually undefeated in the bracket stage in this tournament. 2-0, round of 8, 2-0, semi-finals, and up 2-0 here. It's gonna be his first loss after this tremendous win streak that he's had. Of course, the game isn't over yet, you know.
Alrighty, so Ben enters the Helmsor King fight. Should be no problem here. Nope, he has 17 hits for the hammer, and then he has silver arrows following that. And then, then we'll just mirror over and do Eastern. And then head to Kakariko, activate the flute, and then flute over to the Meyer area. And if he needs ether, well, you return back to Bumper Cave and pick up ether. And even then, that won't give Yem enough time. Do you think Yem will check left side? You know, I think in his position right now, he's going to pick up uh, the cane from Argus and think that that's probably enough. And, uh, you know, that, that'll give him some indication. Maybe maybe that Turtle Rock is the is the play to make after that, and he'll just kind of peace out and leave left side. Yeah, Yen definitely knows he has to cut a lot of corners here if he's going to win. In terms of just equipment, Ben has everything he needs. An additional sword upgrade would be nice, powder would be nice, but you know. Yeah, and uh, some some of the folks in chat here are saying that maybe Ben is looking for boots, which you know, I mean, there's that small percent chance that uh, um, the Ganistar big key is going to be boots locked. Um, so think keeping that in mind, I guess, if there's. Uh, chest close by that he can uh, grab on his way through a dungeon, he might uh, check those out as well. Yes, indeed. Well, I guess we can have a... Um... A little fun game here. Which medallion is needed for Meyer? I mean, it doesn't matter Ooh. because they will have all of them. But you know, we gotta gotta make the time go. But since we're just <laughs> checking locations here, trying to think of things to talk about. So, medallion for Meyer, go. Yeah, what do we think? Um, I think it's probably gonna be Quake. I'm thinking we've got uh, the same medallion in uh, for both of our dungeons today. How about you, Martyr? What do you think? I'm gonna go Bombos. Nice. So Ben definitely has what he's looking for. He doesn't need to go back for Ether. That's gonna be a, a red herring. Yeah, I don't think the Ether is here, but you know, I could be wrong. It's one in three. Maybe I should ask Blind. He may have some information. Also, look at Gem's screen right now in this boss fight. Ooh, so good. Almost had it there. And actually missing a silver arrow there doesn't really matter, it's like half a second or so we lost. Yeah, I'm also getting a quick kill here on Argus. And Ben save and quits. Heads on over to Kakariko to activate the flute. Yeah, so as we suspected, um, Jem skipping out on uh, left side. He got his King of Samaria. He's got other th things in his on his mind. Uh, looks like, ooh, starting at uh, Sanctuary here, he might be thinking Thieves Town. Mmm, yeah. Or just getting Skull Woods out of the way. There is still one item in Skull Woods. Yeah, uh, yes, that's a good point. It was so yeah. long ago that Ben took care of uh, Skull Woods, I forgot that we even had to do it. Yeah, that was such a long time ago, but since there is still one item there, you better go back and just take in the look, you can mirror over, check the pedestal, get that information that we know is not going to be needed, he knows how deep he has to go into Thieves Town, and I just made this really long paragraph here just to make sure I talked for the entire sequence of the flute activation sequence. Go <laughs> Nicely done. 
Yem getting haunted by a bee. Not particularly happy about that. Alrighty, so last piece of the puzzle here. What is the medallion gonna be? Ben is gonna find out any second now. Well, presumably he's just gonna go there immediately and hope that he has what he needs. And it is Quake. So yeah. you know what? Congratulations, you win an arrow capacity upgrade. Oh, great, my favorite. I'm, I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> and now time for this uh, wonderful search for the big key in Meyer. Yeah, I mean, a, uh, a go mode mire can be really quick or it can be agonizingly slow. Um, if it's behind the um, the uh, cutscene uh, chest there, uh, that always is the worst. Um, but, you know, god mire, if we find it in the first one or two chests in the dungeon, it's always a great welcome site. And Ben notably doesn't like to check that uh, cutscene chest. And if it happens to be there, some additional time, some additional time that won't really matter, but you know. Mm. All right, so Jem manages to take care of Mafula no problem. Uh, what he does next, he might is either going to be a dip into Thieves, or he might decide to actually make the play up to Turtle Rock. Uh, but first, he's going to take a look at the one item that is left in the dungeon. Yep, and we know that's nothing. Okay, so no Godmire today. Uh, those are the locations where it is the most convenient for the big key to be. So we're going to have to head over to the left side and see what we might find over there. Yeah, and also none of the two items so far. Actually, we haven't seen half magic, so that looks pretty nice, you know? And Yen is not going Thieves Town. He really doesn't like Thieves Town. I think he's going Turtle Rock. Ooh, that's actually not a bad location for the big key to be uh, for uh, Ben there. Able to route around right quick to uh, the warp here. Uh, so that'll work out well for him. Yeah, relatively fast Mr. Meyer for him. Heading into the basement of Meyer. I don't think the boomerang is going to work there. <laughs> yeah, I think you need to swap weapon. And as we can see, Ben is a full dungeon ahead. Jen has made some uh, really great routing decisions here in the end and has, has had great execution, but that mirror. That mirror. Imagine this race would have been extremely close if the Yen had the money for that. Yeah, because they, they were pretty much uh, neck and neck up until that point. Uh, so, because it, it still was fairly early on in the in the seed even. Um, so it would have made for a completely different kind of uh, feel to this race. But uh, uh, that is kind of the way it goes. Uh, and it made sense that Jem just didn't go in with enough cash and abandon that location for for the rest of the seed, pretty much. Yeah, and that's just how you play in randomizer. Sometimes, if you've already been there, you don't really want to go back. No. And how often does Sora have something? Come on. Yeah, really. Well, Ben can pay for Sora exactly three times and then have 60 rupees over from the three red rupees that he would normally get, but he's too busy killing some eyeballs. Yeah, those silver arrows make quick work of Vitreus here. Oh, and some butter, how about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, Ganon sometimes wants you to bring some food, so we got the butter, we got the mushroom, so yeah, get the food already. Also the flute, so we can bring the duck. How do you prefer your duck? <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 it's a good question. Cooked? <laughs> Yeah. 
Oh, I guess, see, Ben's uh, got all seven of the crystals. That means he's making his way up to uh, Ganon's tower, um, and numbers are flying into the chat already. Um, so in Ganon's tower, there's a little fun game that we like to do here. Uh, one through 22, there are 22 item locations where the big uh, key can be uh, in the basement of Ganon's tower. So put in your numbers, one through 22. Uh, where do you think that uh, big key is going to be? Marivik, what do you think? You know, I'm just gonna say it's gonna be on the torch, and it's just gonna show that it it won't matter that it's on the torch, and also because I don't like Bob, so that's just a big bonus. And since Ben tends to go straight right side, that would be seven, assuming the key does line up for it. Otherwise, it will be three. Nice. And now it's time for you. Um, I like to pick a chest in the rando room, um, so if we go first to right and then over to the left after that, which is kind of somewhat standard, I guess, uh, it's usually, like, I don't know, I'm going to say chest 10 today. Hmm. Yeah, you know, it doesn't really matter, it's one in 22. I don't really think any location is worth more than the other in the logic, but I could be wrong. I guess it depends if Kane of Samaria is needed or not in a situation where Meyer and Turtle Rock are pendants. Or maybe I'm just thinking too hard about it. And Ben is actually going straight left. This is not how he usually routes this, but we will know that the, the boots are not required. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense that he would go to the left side if he, you know, wants that knowledge right away. Do I need the boots or not? not. Ooh, dark magician strats could be. Hmm. Well, he's not killing this. Skeletons. Yeah, I think, I mean, in a way it kind of makes sense. He wanted that confirmation that uh, it wasn't going to be boots required, and then finding that wants to go right side now. And there was no small key there on the right side. And of course, keeping the tile room as is the usual stuff. Alrighty, so we're kind of on four chests here in, what is it, the uh, compass room. I believe that's what it's called? Yeah, I think so. Now we have a key. We have a heart, we have a big key, we have uh, a powder. Hey! I mean, he's literally the things that he was lacking, that we know, because we know where boots are. I guess All that right. is 10. <laughs> yes. Hey, how about that? Nice. I guessed correctly, although I wasn't thinking it would be that chest. That's some interesting logic there. All right, so Ben had... Mm, yeah, Ben's made his way up here. Quick work of those mimics. And Jem... You know, fortunate fall here, and soon we'll be at Trinex. Really impressive spike dodging there by Ben. Yeah, Jem's gonna soon find out uh, that uh, he's pretty far behind. If he didn't already think that, now uh, with every little every piece of this logic here worked against him today. So uh, uh, yeah, it's gonna be feels bad for him, but. Uh, Ben through the gauntlet here, or made his way through the gauntlet. Quick work of those Stalfos, looking really good. 
Yeah, Vens is smooth sailing from here on out. As for Jen, still has two more match points in this final, so it's far from out. Yeah, the screen pendant has been acquired. I think he, that is his next destination. And then with a the one cycle land molus. In what is generally called the uh, tougher part of the gauntlet. Mm hmm. Jam is gonna get his flute in about 10 to 15 seconds. But he still has Meyer. And of course, Janus Tower to go through. And because the big key was on right side and there was no small key on right side, it could take a very long time for him to get that key. Yeah. Jam is now officially in go mode. The thing is though, that Jem has effectively 100% of the seed, and look at the time. In Jem Accuracy Flutus then is in the room before Moldorm 2, and he is skipping everything except for the magic, yeah, Faso. Yeah, without half magic, uh, you definitely want to pick that up. Uh, full magic bar is nice to have. There we go. Very quick kill on the Moldorm. And he's barely missing the hook shot there. Has to use it a second time as Yem soon be inside of Meyer. And uh, not even Meyer being Ether is helping him has to speak, if Meyer was Ether, that is, since he was the only one who picked it up when they both visited Bumper Cave. Sounds like that was just a single there. Yeah, it did look that way. Oh, and a fortunate blue ball. Blue balls are not very kind, even though the Aga patterns are pretty good. There we go, Aga is down. And that leaves one final challenge for Ben in this seed. I think this is going to be a really quick cannon fight. Yeah, I mean, Butter Sword, Silver Arrows, it's going to be uh, open and shut case kind of here for Ben. So to answer Ganon's uh, question there, the answer is that not everyone has good eyesight. <laughs> so Ben already in phase three, just Ganon going to teleport around a bunch. If I do recall, the Silver Arrows were in uh, Kakariko? Ah, yeah, they were here just as I was uh, uh, getting on the scene, so yes. That's one shot, the Fire Rod is out, uh, not getting the glitch, but it's completely fine. Not really the best teleports here for Ganon, but you know, it's not really gonna matter, and ladies and gentlemen, then 
will score his first win in this final. His first victory of three that he will need to be the champion of the summer 2018 tournament. Here are the link to the past randomizer. But of course, he has two more matches that he needs to win. Wow, GG, game four. I'm really hyped. So we'll try and pull Ben in here for an interview as soon as we can here. Meanwhile, we'll see uh, Jem finish out uh, Misery Meyer. We are now joined by Ben. Congratulations. Hey, thanks. So, general thoughts on the seed, if you will. Uh... Well, I don't know. It was, as always, a really bad seed in the end. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know, I feel bad about skipping early side uh, chest, obviously. That bow would have been very really nice earlier. But I think it could have changed my TR play, maybe, I don't know. Um, except that, I'd say it, it went pretty well, at least for me. Um, yeah, I mean, I could have done a lot of dungeons. Was getting, I was getting some items and yeah, as soon as I got the king, I was like, yeah, okay. Well, let's go. Then I got absolutely nothing in there and I was a bit afraid. Then, uh, yeah, getting the flute on star and getting the bow right after was kind of huge, I say, for me. Yeah, that was kind of an interesting play when we when we were watching you here um, to uh, head up to Turtle Rock before checking out the eastern area. Kind of like Walk us through that decision. Like, what what made you go up to Turtle Rock before even it, it checking anything out on the in the Eastern Palace and uh, Palace of Darkness area? To be honest, I was thinking if there was something around Pot or Eastern, I was done because Jam would have done that a long time ago. Um, ah, interesting. So as soon as I got the cane, I, I, actually even a little bit before getting the cane, since we already had Quick and Boat Rods. Um, I was thinking I, I'm gonna have to do that that TR play I feel and then I'm getting the the cans uh, yeah on August I was like okay um, I still don't want to go right away I'm still gonna do a few stuff since I had fight fairy and a few other fast checks but yeah after that it was like let's go let's let's do it. Yeah, it is interesting how that kind of like meta game stuff does all you know factor into a lot of races. You know who your opponent is. You know the kind of plays they like to make. So uh, thinking that uh, Turtle Rock was your best bet, uh, uh, and I mean you you already had a bit of a lead there because you had picked up the mirror much before Gem did. Um, so you were already kind of doing all right. But uh, to think that uh, you know if it wasn't Turtle Rock, you might you might lose the the race. Uh, it definitely comes into play when you're one on one versus someone who's a, a really great opponent. Yeah, you you have to do some gambles. You cannot really just go where you can finish stuff and just hope to get the items. You always have to kind of follow the items and gamble a little. Nice. So I guess you know that's uh, your first win in uh, the uh, the finals here. So you're you're staying alive. Uh, you got two more to go to get to uh, to to win the whole thing. So how how are you feeling? Is this kind of I guess it gives you a little bit of you know confidence or or, or something. How are you feeling going into game four? I guess feeling okay. I don't think I've played especially bad in the first and second one. It's just some little details that made me lose. So I mean it's random in the end. So it, yeah. it can can go either way anyway, and I'm hoping we'll get five races now. I think we're all hoping for that too. I mean, like, uh, uh, it's such a great series to watch you two go against each other here. So uh, we're the, we as the fans are, are very excited for more rando action between you guys. So um, I don't know, Marvi, you got any uh, questions here for Ben? I mean, I do have to ask about the what seemed to be a very long-term routing decision when you decided to go into Ice Palace to get the 5-6 and then go Swamp and then do the Pyramid Fair. Was that a conscious decision that you made early on when you saw the 5-6 the yes. uh, destinations? Yeah, it was. Because if I was doing Swamp before, it was a bit more annoying to go back for the Fat Fairy. So after Swamp, I was most likely doing Fat Fairy anyways. I was thinking I do Ice Palace first and... 
but yeah, in the end it didn't do anything, it didn't help. It just got like temporarily nice. The Canaan Swamp, which was nice, then Fat Fairy was nothing. Yeah. But yeah, I did think about it because of 5 6. And of course, with that, you could also get the escape beam. We were sitting here talking about, oh, he's going to go Sahaswal after this and get the bow and then do Eastern Call. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> you went and did uh, Turtle Rock instead. I did think pretty hard about going to just even Sa, not even doing uh, Eastern Pod, because I was uh, I, I'm not too sure I want to go there without the bow. I, I've done that pretty often for nothing, so I don't know. The Eastern pot combo is not something I, I like to do too often. If I don't go to Eastern early, I just like to go when I have the bow most of the time. So for me, I went to TR missing the bow and the flute, maybe the boots also. So it was three items possi possibly there. So it didn't feel like a bad play at the time. But yeah, knowing that the bow was at the uh, and the boots were not required. So it was kind of just for the flute, which worked in the end. And of course, those boots were over in Tower of Hera. Fire source locked, of course. <laughs> Alrighty, well, I guess that might uh, do it for our broadcast. Um, so, game four, Get Hype, it is going to be tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, so, look forward to that. It'll be on the Speed Gaming channel here. Um, so, uh, if you haven't followed our runners already, you should give them a follow. They are putting on a great show here. Um, and uh, I'd like to thank our tracker, Danny, for clicking those buttons behind the scenes there. And uh, my co-com, Marjavik, thanks a lot, man. This has been a lot of fun. Oh, absolutely. I've definitely enjoyed doing this uh, game here with you. Hope to uh, do more with you in the future, if you don't mind. Nice. So with all that said and done, be sure to follow our Twitch channels, of course, Speed Gaming 1 through 6. Also, there's a Speed Gaming YouTube channel where the votes are uploaded at some point after, so maybe go there as well. Hint, 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 hint. With all that said and done, I've been Marjevic. And I've been Sabotender, and we'll catch you uh, next time.